different uh, uh, viewpoint on how it looked some seven years ago. So welcome, David, and uh, Great. you take the floor. Okay, sure. Thank you very much, and thanks to the Danish Institute for hosting this event, and thanks to my fellow panelists. I very much look forward to hearing your comments as well, and, and I'm glad to, to be here today. I, I was here in January, as you recall. Um, the weather, I have to say, today is much better than it was in January when I was here, so I've learned a lesson on when to visit Copenhagen. Um, but uh, thanks to everyone for coming. Um, I would like to uh, uh, sort of share with you the Freedom of the Press survey, and, and I'll, I'll leave some copies here, which will also make my bag lighter, um, that just came out last Wednesday. We released this in Washington at the museum, uh, where if you do visit Washington, go to the museum. The press freedom map is on the wall on the third floor of the museum. We have a very good partnership with them. Um, it's also a fascinating museum to visit in any event, even if, if we didn't have a place on their wall there. Um, so I, I'm going to walk you through the results of our press freedom survey, which covers the whole globe. And we've been publishing this since 1980. So it gives us a nice uh, long-term view of how freedom of the press issues have progressed over the years. And uh, accordingly, I'm going to start uh, <coughs> with this. So this is global press freedom map from 1980. Um, and as you'll see uh, uh, when we move up to the present time, the overriding trend in the past 30 years has been one of gradual, occasionally dramatic improvements in the level of media freedom worldwide. Um, in 1980, as you see, the index showed a pretty grim global landscape of press freedom uh, in which only 25% of the world's countries had a fully free media while 22% were partly free, and the majority of countries back in 1980, we felt, were in the not free category. And as you can see, in particular, the uh, country while the Soviet Union still existed, of course, China, and, and many countries in Africa, uh, North Africa, as well as Sub-Saharan Africa, fell into that category. So if we move to 1990, um, we see that there was a modest improvement uh, with substantial openings in particular in Latin America, which if, if you go back, you see there's a lot of partly free colors there, as well as a large not free with Argentina, and then you move <coughs> to 1990, and you see that there's quite an advancement of free countries in the Latin American, uh, South American continent. Um, and there's some scattered improvements in parts of Africa, Again, just quickly to go back, you see it's mostly uh, not free there in 1980, and then in 1990, there are countries that fall into the partly free category. And the same in Asia, there's some uh, openings in Asia as well in 1990. In uh, 2000, um, we see further progress um, with uh, a real blossoming of press freedom. 37% uh, of the countries were rated free. If you remember back in 1980, only 25% of the countries were free, had a free media in 1980. So 35% were rated, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 37% of countries were rated free in, in the year 2000. 27% were rated partly free, and 35% were rated not free. Again, back in 1980, the not free category constituted 53% of the world's countries. So a significant improvement. We see some slippage in the Latin American region um, in 2000 compared to 1990. Um, but there were positive openings in what used to be the Soviet Union with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, quite a bit of improvement in that whole region. In sub-Saharan Africa, we see improvements. And also in Asia, uh, we see improvements. And I'll just go back to uh, 1990, where you see the chart there, um, and then compare it to 2000, and there is significant Im improvement. So um, the report that we just released, Global Press Freedom in 2013, which despite the number 2013, actually covers the year 2012. Um, our titling maybe could be a little less confusing, but in any event, this covers 
uh, the state of press freedom in countries from January 2012 through December 2012. It doesn't cover events uh, that have been occurring since January of this year. Um, and this map compared to the one in 2000 um, shows some significant backsliding, particularly in uh, what I prefer to now call, since it's more than 20 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, rather than post-Soviet or former Soviet, I'd rather just call it Eurasia, rather than something that it's not anymore, something that it is. And in that whole region, particularly given Russia's land mass, um, you see that that whole region, which, if you go back to 2000, was in the partly free category, and then you see the difference in 2013. Um, we see also in uh, the Americas, there's been some slippage. Again, look at, the, there was some green there in Latin and South America, um, and most of that now is in the partly free category. Um, we've also seen some slippage in Asia uh, and Sub-Saharan Africa. If we break it down um, by, by data in terms of the, the number of countries, uh, we're talking about 20, uh, sorry, 63 countries, or 32% of the total number of countries in the world, fall into the free category in this latest survey. 70 countries, or 36% of the total, were in partly free, and 64 countries or 32% of the number of countries as a whole fell into the not free category. If you look at it in terms of population, um, and the numbers of course are gonna be distorted by the more than 1.3 billion people in China alone, um, we see a, a bit of a bleaker picture in the breakdown in countries. Uh, we see in the free countries, it's only 14% of the world's population live in countries with a free press, uh, Forty-three percent live in countries with partly free press, and uh, almost half of the not free population uh, of forty-three percent of the world's population um, are in not free. And as I say, almost half of that is in China alone. Um, and then, if you add in Russia on top of China's population, you almost have half of the not free population right there um, between Russia and, and China. Um, if you look at uh, this breakdown, which is just a further look at the countries and population, um, these right here are the rankings that we use and the aggregate scores that countries would come up with. Um, and the higher the score, the worse your ranking will be. Um, so as you, as you go further down, you see that it moves into the not free category. These are in the free, um, and India and China do quite distort the population. Uh, graph or the bar there, as you can see. S the changes. Um, there are countries each year that go from one category to another. This is the first time that we've had status changes in countries that were all negative. In the past, we've had some countries with an improved score. This is the first time that all the status changes went from either free to partly free or partly free to not free. <coughs> Um, and uh, in, in particular, uh, Mali had the largest score decline of any country in our survey, um, and it was the largest single year decline in a decade of this survey. Um, we also saw the situation in Greece get, get, uh, get worse, and maybe I'll just take a, a minute to walk through each of these uh, declines uh, without getting into too much detail. In the case of Greece, the decline was 11 points, and this was due to an increasingly hostile legal, political, and economic environment. The economic crisis has had a real impact on the state of press freedom uh, in Greece. We see uh, a rise, we've seen a rise in intimidation of and attacks against journalists, uh, closures of and cutbacks at numerous print and broadcast uh, media outlets as a result of the economic crisis. Uh, and a reduction in media diversity and in comprehensive and accurate reporting about the country's political and economic situation. So that explains uh, Greece's decline. In the case of Israel, this reflects the indictment of uh, journalists for possession of state secrets. In fact, actually, this journalist appeared in Washington at our release of the report, so it was interesting to have him there. This is the first time that this law 
had been used against the press in several decades. Um, there also were instances of politicized interference with the content of Israeli broadcasting authority, radio programs, and concerns surrounding the, uh, renew the license renewal of television's Channel 10 in Israel. And then th there also was the economic impact of uh, Israel Hayom, uh, an owner-subsidized free newspaper that is now the <coughs> largest single circulation daily and the impact that's having on the ability, sustainability of other newspapers and media outlets to to exist uh, in, in light of in light of that uh, paper. Moving to Mali, uh, I think the situation there is, is fairly well known. The, the uh, coup attempt and, and the uh, situation in the north uh, led to a, a significant suppression of media freedom uh, in the country. Uh, this included a temporary suspension of the Constitution and arbitrary arrests of journalists, as well as the takeover of the state broadcaster and restrictions on reporting on the coup that took place, the closure of uh, or takeover of nearly all outlets, and the imposition of Islamic uh, law <coughs> in the North, as well as harassment and attacks against a number of journalists in both the North and, and the South of the country. Then, so those were all changes from free to partly free. And Mali had been a country pretty solidly in the free category until events of last year. And so while it had a, a significant point decline, it only went from free to partly free. It didn't fall all the way into the not free category. But there, are, there were countries that went from partly free to not free. And let me just quickly run through those. In the case of Ecuador, um, not a huge decline, but enough to tip it into the partly free category from, I'm uh, sorry, the not free category from the partly free category. Uh, and this was due to government-sponsored regulations that severely restricted media coverage of electoral campaigns, President Correa's directive to withdraw government advertising from privately owned uh, media that were critical of the government, and a general reduction in the political and investigative reporting due to an increasingly <coughs> hostile environment that uh, was created by, by the Korea government. Egypt, uh, a country that saw a five-point decline, um, this was due to increasing violence uh, against and harassment of journalists and the adoption of a new constitution in December that, while enshrining the right to freedom of the press, allows for limitations based on social or cultural or political grounds. Um, in addition, the Egyptian judici judiciary has ruled against journalists in, in several cases, and the Egyptian media has become much more polarized since uh, President Morsi's election last June. In Guinea-Bissau, uh, uh, eight-point decline due to restrictions on coverage of the April 2012 coup and subsequent protests and increased abuse, intimidation, and threats against journalists by the military in the aftermath of the coup there. Uh, and then two, the last two in Paraguay, um, just a, a small decline, but enough to tip it from the border of being partly free into the not free category. This was due to the parliamentary coup that removed Fernando Lugo as president and the immediate purge in the state media by new president uh, Federico Franco, in which 27 journalists lost their jobs at TV, TV Publica, and there were over uh, sorry there were overt attempts to influence editorial content at that channel. And then last uh, is Thailand again, not a huge decrease, but enough to move it in from the partly free to the not free category, uh, where we see court decisions. Uh, about the Le Majes uh, law, which restrict uh, speech deemed offensive to the monarchy, um, and third parties able to bring cases uh, along those lines against journalists. The authorities stepped up efforts to enforce these laws last year, uh, and there have been harsh punishments meted out uh, in a number of cases, and we see growing self-censorship as a result in the case of Thailand. Uh, where the government and the parliament proved <coughs> unwilling to address these laws. But these are the biggest uh, gains and declines from 2011 to 2012. Burma is a good news story. 
Um, it's still in the not free category because the environment was so repressive, but we've seen uh, a significant improvement in the case of Burma um, and, and its, its uh, score at least going up, though still not enough to move into the partly free category. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire also where we've seen improvement, um, Afghanistan improvement and so on. You can see the improvements on the right side and then the declines. Um, sadly led by Mali uh, with the worst decline uh, down at the bottom. We have a category we call the worst of the worst, um, a grouping that countries shouldn't strive to be a member of, um, but these are the countries with the worst score, as I mentioned before that previous graph, the higher your score, the worse off the state of press freedom. These are countries that fall into the worst category um, and uh, North Korea and Turkmenistan are in competition for the worst uh, state of press freedom uh, in the world. So uh, this is not a good group of countries to be involved in. Some of the key trends from the survey, um, heightened con contestation over new media, uh, where in particular you see citizen journalists getting more active in a number of places um, and new media uh, playing an important role, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa, where we really hadn't seen uh, much of this kind of development before. But at the same time, we're also seeing governments trying to respond to this emergence of new media by trying to crack down, and it isn't just in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, we see it in the case of Russia, for example, where there was legislation passed last year that tries to restrict internet freedom as well. Um, the, another trend we see, uh, fear elections really are impossible without a free press, uh, where a level playing field <coughs> isn't possible when the state tries to control the media, in many cases the broadcast media, which remains the main medium by which most citizens get their news and information. Um, we've seen this in Russia, we've seen it in Venezuela, in Ecuador, in Ukraine. Um, but on the positive side of this uh, uh, bullet about elections, uh, the positive role that media played in Georgia and in Armenia, uh, where they were much more free there. Um, we've seen gains in West Africa and frankly throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. In particular, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, I mentioned in the previous chart, also in Liberia, in Senegal, Malawi, Mauritania, even in Zimbabwe, uh, which remains still very much in the not free category, but there has been some improvement in Zimbabwe um, because of the proliferation of, of new media there. Um, and then the other, the other one is the declines due to the European economic crisis, in particular with Greece, but also in Spain, um, and we've seen reduced diversity of, of content and the media's ability to perform its watchdog role in a number of, of European countries. Um, the reasons for the, the, the overall decline that we've seen are, include an increasingly sophisticated repression of independent journalism and new media by authoritarian regimes. The, the ripple effects, as I just mentioned, of the European economic crisis and longer term challenges to the financial sustainability of print media in particular, um, and ongoing threats from non-state actors to media organizations and to journalists from radical Islamists and organized crime groups. Um, the, we do a separate report on internet freedom, but we do see an increasing correlation between the state of press freedom and the sort of more traditional uh, definition of the term but also with internet freedom. Um, and here you can see that uh, the traditional freedom, uh, press freedom is here, internet freedom is here. Estonia actually comes out in our internet freedom survey with the best score, um, and you see the, the correlations. Now some governments have not caught up with their repressive efforts in the internet freedom uh, sphere as much, but unfortunately, that is starting to happen. You do see it, of course, in Iran, uh, where the Iranian government goes after both the tra traditional as well as the uh, internet and electronic <coughs> media. China, the same thing, where the Chinese are the most aggressive in terms of trying to 
uh, censor what is being said not only in print and in broadcast and radio, but also over the internet. If you look at uh, global average scores over the past five years, um, you see that there's a, a bump up in 2011, um, and that is due to events in the Middle East and North Africa. But overall, had it not been for that, you'd see a pretty gradual decline over the past five years. And this is consistent with our other main report, which is Freedom of the World, which has actually measured a seven-year decline in the state of freedom uh, around the world. In terms of the biggest gains, gainers and decliners over the past five years, different than the other chart I showed you, which was just from 2011 to 2012, uh, you see Libya leading the way, Tunisia uh, not far behind. I mentioned Burma's Im improvements. Um, and uh, in, in the Eurasia region, you see Moldova, and Georgia, um, and, and even, even Bangladesh. And then on the negative side, you do see some countries in Europe uh, that factor in this list, Macedonia, Greece, uh, Hungary, um, and then uh, there are other countries in, in Africa. Honduras has not done well. Ecuador has also not done well. And Bahrain, where we've seen a, a pretty significant crackdown against the, the press in that country. Um, if you look at regional trends in a breakdown this way, starting with the Americas, uh, there is a pretty significant difference between the northern part of the Americas, the Western Hemisphere, and the, the central and southern part, the Latin American part. Um, Ecuador and Paraguay, I've mentioned, shifted from the partly free to the not free category. The, the, there have been declines in Argentina and Brazil. Cuba, in particular, is one of the worst countries in the world on press freedom. Um, Venezuela, where we saw a particular crackdown in connection with the election that took place. Uh, when Chavez was still alive last October. Uh, Mexico is one of the most dangerous places in the world for journalists. Uh, the number of, of uh, deaths and murders uh, and injuries to journalists has a terribly inhibiting effect on press freedom in that country, and it's why Mexico uh, is in the not free category. Uh, it's less specific government policies from the Mexican government than the overall state of, of media freedom in a country and that's how Mexico winds up in the not free category. Um, and the United States is one of the better performers, um, but uh, there's been less access to government sources um, that uh, we found to be problematic um, in the past year. Moving to the Asia Pacific region, uh, we've seen uh, improvements uh, that affect only 5% of the population in, in, with countries in the free press. Um, it has the world's, along with Turkmenistan, the worst rated country in North Korea, and China's not all that far behind. Um, so Asia accounts for a significant chunk of the population that lives in, not, in countries with a not free press. Um, the biggest point improvement I mentioned before is Burma. Um, Afghanistan saw some improvement. Thailand, unfortunately, shifting back uh, to uh, the not free category. But there were also declines in the other countries mentioned there, Cambodia, Hong Kong, Maldives, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. Um, Central Eastern Europe and Eurasia, uh, a combination of countries that are quite different in nature. Um, and in the Eurasian region, uh, a sub-region rather than the overall region, we actually see the lowest point scores uh, anywhere in the world. It's now replaced North Africa and the Middle East. Um, the Central East European region has uh, performed better than Eurasia, but there has been declines. I mentioned Hungary before, um, and Hungary really is a place where we've been concerned, although there wasn't really a major change in Hungary's uh, score in the past year. I mentioned the improvements in connection with Armenia and Georgia. Uh, but there has been further deterioration in Kazakhstan, in Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijan with presidential elections coming there in October. Um, and Russia is a country whose score can't go a lot lower. Um, the government there has really engaged in a serious crackdown against journalists. This has been true not just last year, 
of the past several years, but it's gotten particularly worse in 2012. Um, and there was legislation passed to also try to rein in uh, freedom on the net, uh, which is a problem. That's something that is a new development where Russia had, despite its efforts to track down, crack down on traditional media, had stayed away from the internet, but now it's moving into that realm as well. Middle East and North Africa, um, on a regional basis, overall regional basis, not sub-regional, but regional basis, this has had the worst average score. Uh, no country ranked free this year in, in the Middle East and North Africa uh, with the uh, downgrade of Israel as a result of the uh, reasons I mentioned before. 92% um, of the population live in not free countries in this region. There has been an improvement due to new media development, uh, bloggers and, and others in this area, uh, but there has, has generally been a uh, status quo in most of this region. There has been some improvement in Yemen, uh, which doesn't get much attention these days. Egypt has been a deterioration. Um, in, in 2011, or, or 2012, but for 2011, Libya and Tunisia saw the biggest point improvements those have remained pretty much steady, at least there hasn't been backsliding in those two countries. Uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, we see um, that in some places the situation has remained uh, very bad in Equatorial Guinea and Eritrea, which are in our worst of the worst category. Mali I've already talked about, Guinea-Bissau also moving into the not free category, but you see the countries I've uh, mentioned already that have seen some improvement. Um, and uh, there, there still is or has been growing concern about press freedom in South Africa um, and efforts to try to uh, impose more pressure and restrictions on journalists there. Um, and last region is Western Europe, uh, the region with the most free countries of anywhere in the world. Uh, but there were some big declines as a result of the economic crisis. I've already talked about Greece. I've already mentioned Spain. Uh, Italy uh, also is a problem due to the concentration of ownership. Um, and there have been issues raised in, in the UK about uh, libel laws and, and media regulation. And then, of course, in Turkey, Turkey is the country with the highest number of journalists in uh, detention or under arrest of any country in the world. Um, and so Turkey is a country that we also keep an eye on. Um, so those are, are uh, that is an overview of our uh, latest press freedom survey. Um, and I think I'll stop there. And uh, after the panel, happy to take any questions. Thank you.